In this video, my friends, we will be comparing the all new Fire TV Cube against the very popular Apple TV 4K. And we'll be seeing whether that extra money you spend on the Apple TV, is it really worth it? In this video, as well as the physical differences, we'll look at the different interface. We'll also compare the different applications that you can get and what you can actually use your device for. One surprising difference we'll look at is the difference in picture quality, and I'll come onto that a little bit later, but it was a big difference. We'll also compare some of the little games that you can get because these things are much more than just streaming devices. They are home entertainment systems as well. And so there are lots of different games and lots of different things that you can do. Okay, so just for disclosure, I bought and paid for both of these devices myself. I'm not being asked to say anything about these devices by either company, and the thoughts that I give will be my own. However, I am in the Apple ecosystem. I do own an iPhone. Right, the terms of the physical differences between the two. Well, the footprint is very similar, but there is a difference in terms of height. On the Apple TV, on the back, you have a power adapter, an HDMI, and an Ethernet port. There are no physical buttons at all. Whereas on the Fire Cube TV, you've got all those buttons on the top, you've got your microphones on there to hear your voice, and I'll come on to that a little bit later. And then on the back, you've got a micro USB. In the box does come an Ethernet port, so you can still plug it in via Ethernet. You also get an infrared cable extender, and obviously the HDMI and the power. This is the remote control. The left hand side is the Apple and above where it says menu you've got almost like a touch screen interface where you can actually navigate up and down. There isn't any physical button to navigate up and down. Now I would say sometimes I like it and it works well. Other times it can be a little bit frustrating. I've actually got a Harmony remote which I tend to use more than the actual Apple remote itself because I do find that touch screen a little bit annoying. The size however is brilliant and it does charge via lightning so there's no physical batteries. Whereas on the Amazon remote, you've got the battery port at the back or the battery compartment at the back, and you've got all of the physical buttons. It's definitely a bit more plasticky. It definitely doesn't look as good, but it does a good job and it's very easy to navigate through. Okay, so let's look at the interface and the differences between. Now, I would say that both interfaces are pleasant to use, easy to operate, and I think they look great. They're presented well, very, very professional. It's a very nice setup. What you do have to bear in mind is that both of these companies do want to push their own material to you. So for instance, on the Amazon device, Prime is very heavily featured. That's great if you're a Prime customer because you can literally just go in and access all of that. But if you're not, you've basically got to scroll through quite a lot of Prime stuff before you can actually get to some other things that you might be interested in watching. You have got the option to customize your home screen. And so therefore, if you don't want as much Prime content showing, then you can add your own applications and have those featured primarily at the top. So that's one way of avoiding. But if you're scrolling from left to right where you've got the home screen, you've got the your videos, and then you've got movies, TV shows, and apps, for instance, then you are going to have to sift through quite a lot of other content. In my opinion, where these boxes have really taken a massive leap forward over the last few years is opening them up to the third party applications. There are literally hundreds of different things that you can do, everything from games to catch up TV. There's also the ability to link all of your favorite things in one location. So for instance, on the Prime box, not only do you have Prime, but you've got Netflix, you can have Hulu if you want to, if you're in America, you can have Now TV and BT TV in the UK. So they really do allow pretty much everything to be in one place. Now, as I said, mentioned games. There are hundreds of different games that you can go for. I downloaded a quick game and played it. It was Hangman. It was a little bit of fun, but again, it's just showing you something else which you can do. You have got the ability as well to add third-party controllers so that you can control things like racing games and make it a much more of a console-type experience. The picture quality with both of these devices will be outstanding. However, there is one big difference as I alluded to at the beginning of this video. YouTube is not available in 4K on the Apple TV 4K. As bizarre as that sounds, it is true. You cannot watch 4K YouTube footage currently 
on the Apple TV 4K. This is 4K on the Cube, on the Fire Cube TV, and it's absolutely breathtaking. I'm actually testing this Samsung TV at the moment. I've got a review coming in the next week or so. And on this, this Samsung footage in 4K looks absolutely incredible. Now compare it to how it looks on the Apple TV, and you can see a big difference, and that difference is even bigger when you're actually standing in front of the screen. So some of you may think I'm nitpicking, and some of you may just disagree, but the image on the right is 1080p, and the image on the left is 4K. And yes, there is a big difference. The blacks are definitely better on the Fire TV, and there's obviously, therefore, a lot more detail. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, what's surprising is obviously the Apple TV 4K is the more expensive of these devices, and so therefore you would expect, if anything, that would be the one that would be able to access YouTube in 4K. Hopefully. It's just a question of time and they will fix that glaring problem. Okay, so it's now time to have a look at the operating system and the interface on the Apple TV. Now, if you've used Apple TV over the last few years, you'll see that it's still quite similar, apart from the top section, where they now have a section of around eight to 10 different TV shows or movies which they're promoting. And if you scroll along between them, it will give you the background image and then it will load up the trailer. Now that is very similar to Netflix. I wonder whether Apple got the idea from them. But yep, so that's nice just to see the new things that are coming soon. I do have to say that I definitely prefer the interface on the Apple TV because it's just that one screen and everything is there. So if you want iTunes, for instance, you can go into movie iTunes. If you want music, you can go to Apple Music and you can literally just navigate between those different applications. There's a full app store to download further applications. And as you can see, they're promoting the arcade section. And this is something which came out in the last couple of weeks or probably last month or so now. And that's where there's a whole host of different games but it's very very simple to navigate between and all of the different things are there you've still got access to things like your ITV hub and BBC iPlayer or if you're in America your catch-up TV wherever you are and again you can load a lot of third-party apps in terms of games I think that my experience that I've had on the Apple TV is that it is far better for games than on most of other streaming devices maybe apart from the Nvidia Shield something like this for instance Jack box games this is a board game uh, but it's one that we tend to use at Christmas and when we've got friends and family around because it's got these games like Pictionary which you can then connect your iPhone or an Android phone you can join the party effectively draw something on the screen of your phone and it will appear up on the screen and then you have to guess what somebody's drawing it can be quite a bit of fun and again there's another game where you get given a word where you don't really know what the meaning is you have to make up your own meaning which you type into your phone and then that will appear on the screen and people have got to guess the meaning so it's a nice feature and it's something a little bit clever and it's something which not many people have seen on any of these other streaming type devices so definitely without a doubt my favorite interface is the Apple TV. Now, as you can see on the screen, another big benefit is the fact that if you have got an iOS device, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad, you can easily mirror that device to the Apple TV and watch videos or music. Find the film Rocket Man. If you're going to make your purchase based on the voice control functions, then definitely go for the Firecube TV because in my opinion, it is far more superior than the Apple TV. It works brilliantly. I'll show you a little bit more in just a second. Find Rocket Man on Prime Video. So even when you try to search something in a third party application on the Apple TV, it will only load that application. It won't do the search. If your buying decision is going to come down to voice control, then definitely go for the Fire TV Cube because already it can do an awful lot more than what the Apple TV box can. So for instance, when I first plugged in the Fire TV Cube, it automatically recognized that it was a Samsung TV and I was then able to voice control, turning on and turning off and changing channel. I then set up a soundbar just by adding a device and again, it just asked for what was the make of the device and again, it did that brilliantly. I was then able to set up my cable box so I could even change channel on the cable change box. Tuning to Sky Sports News. Tuning to Sky Sports we News on cable. Uh, stabbed at the Arndale Shopping Centre. Still.
Another really good feature with the Fire TV Cube is the fact that it has the same speaker as that's in the Echo Dot third generation, the 1.6 inch mini speaker. And that means it delivers a really good sound regardless of whether you've got any other device on. So you can use it completely independently of your AV system, and including your TV. Could be bad news for Scotland's rugby team, the Scottish Rugby Union. I feel another advantage with the Fire TV Cube is its ability to connect to third-party smart devices. So for instance, these that you can see here on the screen. So if you are the owner of a Ring video doorbell, for instance, you will be able to connect to that and have that displaying full screen on your TV as soon as somebody comes to the door. Okay, so let's compare the actual specifications between these two devices. Now, the Apple TV comes in at more expensive. So you are going to be looking at paying a little bit more, and that's $179 or £179 is the starting point, whereas the Firecube TV, the 2019 version, is just $119 or £109. But you are getting higher storage with the Apple device. So 32 gigabytes is the base model, and that goes up to 64, where at the moment there is just one, Fire Cube, and that's just 16 gigabytes of storage. You are getting two very fast processors with both these devices the A10X Fusion 64 bit, and also the Amazon Fire Cube has a hexacore processor, and it is absolutely lightning fast. Both of them support 4K Dolby Vision HDR10, but the Fire Cube TV also supports HDR10. The voice control now, this is where the Fire Cube I think does win because not only do you have voice control via the remote, but you've also got that autonomous hands free which I showed you earlier. Both of these devices support 5.1 and 7.1 Dolby Atmos and with AV controls this is where you can control other devices for instance like your cable box, your television or your AV system. This is where the Firecube TV definitely comes into its own because all of that support is built in and it's easy to set up right from the manage devices section. Whereas with the Apple TV 4K you will have to use third party apps such as your Harmony or your Harmony remote and that that then obviously means you do need extra hardware as well. So it's not as straightforward with the Apple TV 4K. So which one of these should you buy? It's a really difficult decision because they both are great devices. And if you're like me, I'm just going to end up keeping both of them. But I would say that if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you use things like AirPlay a lot and mirroring your device, then maybe it's the Apple TV. If you're Android or you don't use those features on your iPhone, then Without a doubt, pick up a Fire TV Cube. Guys, thanks for watching this video as always. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.